Hello, welcome to your full body Pilates workout on the reformer with the entire classical order. I'm going to teach you Joseph Pilates order on the reformer and how to do it right. Welcome to OnlinePilatesClasses.com, the most supportive Pilates loving community across the globe. Enjoy new weekly classes from our amazing teachers. Download the OnlinePilatesClasses.com app today. Hi, I'm Les Logan. I'm the co-founder of OnlinePiliesClasses.com. I've been doing Pilates since 2005, teaching since 2008. One of my teachers was one of Joseph Pilates' clients, and all the others I've trained with happen to train with Romana, who also trained with Joseph Pilates. So I've got your full order here, train and many years experience in it. You can use this to enjoy parts of it with me. You can watch the parts you don't know. You can use this as a reference material. This workout is gonna be something I know you're gonna come back to over and over again. Before we get started, let's talk about what the classical order even is. So what it means is that Joseph Pilates had an order on the reformer and his clients would just come in, get on the reformer and do their order. And they would omit the exercise they were not ready for. So what's really amazing about Joseph Pilates order is once you know it and you start to understand the exercises for your body, you can come and do your workout without actually having to go to a specific class at a set time. Each exercise is designed to warm you up for the next. So you'll see, we'll st always start with footwork, but the exercises towards the end are compounding exercises from those at the beginning. So you'll really wanna build yourself up. Now, when you're a beginner, you won't do all of this at the same time. On our YouTube channel here and in our membership on onlinepliesclasses.com, we always follow Joe Supplies orders and intentions. We'll remove exercises that are not part of a theme or part of the level that we're teaching you at that time. If you'd like to have other materials that help you understand this order, I have a Reformer flashcards deck. We do have a card that has the entire order on it. All the cards are set up in an order so that the transition from one exercise to the next is included. And we even put transitions from an intermediate exercise to another intermediate exercise or to an advanced exercise, depending on the level that you're ready for. So get that deck if you haven't gotten it already. We'll put the link below. And finally, if you have any questions, comments, wonders, worries about this workout, please put in the comments below. I go live every Sunday. I will answer your questions at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you never miss any of our tips, tutorials, or other workouts that we have. All right, now let's get into it. So I'm gonna have four springs on. You should have three to four heavy springs on. I will call out springs and about the tension level. Obviously make sure it's working for you, but you do want to have supportive springs. And make sure your handles are where you can reach them because we're gonna transition together. Arms down by your side. First we do footwork. And so you do eight to 10 of these. And you're not here to judge your footwork. You're here to observe your footwork. And obviously we can't do it with our eyes. We can't see it but just hugging those heels together, staying on the balls of the feet, going out and in with some zest. I know that can scare some people, but you don't fall slowly. You fall <laughs> fast. And so Pilates, I like to say, it helps us fall better. Come all the way in. Lift both feet up at the same time, land on your arches, hug everything tight, eight to 10 on your arches. So I want you to try to move with zest and just breathe naturally. If there's a breath cue, I'll actually give it to you. So don't stress about it. And what you're observing is do your feet move around a lot? Do your knees come apart? Does your pelvis tip back and forth? And then come in onto those heels, eight to 10 of these. So again, parallel and together. If for some reason you can't have your legs together fully, having a little pillow or a ball nearby is gonna be really helpful so you can close that chain. We love to give options on OPC. Come all the way in. You're gonna lift both feet up, land back onto the balls of the feet in a slight turnout with those heels together. Press out, hug the heels together to go under and lift them up. So this is one of the many tendon stretches you'll experience in Pilates, but it's less of an Achilles stretch and it's actually about the feet connecting to the seat. So you go as low as your heels can stay together, hugging those outer hips in and as high as you can, keeping those heels together. So feel your outer hips and inner thighs engage more with each point and flex. And then you'll come all the way in. Now I can transition my foot bar down by myself. If you need to sit up and take yours down, please do. I like to get it out of the way. Grab your handles. We're gonna go into the hundred. So pinky side of the hand into the handle. Take a deep breath in. Yes, all of these springs, you can do it. Take a deep breath in, exhale to lift up. And then inhale for five pumps and exhale for five pumps. If your straps are really short, you have them at the level where they just hook around the shoulder rests, then that spring setting is gonna feel very heavy. If you notice, my straps are quite long. So we can talk about the length of your straps. 
you'll really, it's very important because then the spring settings for a classical re reformer workout are actually gonna feel really good and supportive for you. So we do 10 cycles of breathing here. <sighs> Carriage should be nice and still. <sighs> Hugging those heels tight together. When we transition out of this, we're gonna teaser it for the overhead. If you do not do overhead exercises, you can go into coordination or you can watch and then join us for coordination in a second. One more cycle. Stretch your hands into the straps, lower those legs down. I take the handles in one hand. I tease her on up, and then I drop off to two heavy springs, or you can do a medium and a heavy. The lightest, I would say, is two mediums. Lower your headrest down. Take your legs long together, arms up to the sky, and then the arms press down. Once they get down, the hips can lift up. Then you stretch the legs up to the sky and we roll down. We're just gonna do three of these. So you'll notice because we're doing the full order, after footwork in the 100, I do about three of everything, sometimes five. And the reason is I don't have two hours to work out. <laughs> so we just do three really awesome ones. Bend those knees in, bend your elbows in, lift your head and chest up, squeeze the heels together, press the arms and legs straight, open, close the legs bend the knees, bend the elbows. And again, everything goes out together, open, close, pull the knees in with those heels tight, bend the elbows, chest stays up the whole time. This is our last one. And then we take those handles in one hand, we sit on up, we spin all the way around, and we drop off a spring. So one heavy or one medium spring. And again, you can see how long my straps are, right? Rowing. So knuckles together, elbows up, sit up nice and tall, squeeze those legs, round back, open the arms up, palms are facing back, push as wide as you can, and then round forward of your legs, tap the thumbs behind you, maybe you can hook them. If you're bending your elbows to hook them, just reach as much as you can. Again, open, reach. If you're like, Leslie, oh, wait, can you discuss that one more time? Every exercise we are doing here today, I have a free tutorial here on this channel that you can really dive into. So just make note of the ones you wanna dive into later because um, that's what they're there for, <laughs> right? Rowing two. So that's 90 degrees, although it's a lie. Open those elbows up, sit nice and tall. With a flat back, we lean back. We sit on up, the pinky side of our hand is in the handle still. We round, we reach our hands down and back. Open the collarbones, lift the arms, lift the ribs, but the head stays reaching down till your hands are over your feet. You roll up next time. Here we go. Too often people tend to roll up while they're circling their arms around and you miss out on this amazing stretch. If you are new to Pilates, full permission, to not do the rowing yet or to do it with weights. And the reason is, is that you wouldn't do the rowing for a, like a year in Joseph Ply studio. It's complicated, it's got a lot of parts. There's a lot of choreography. And Pilates is easy if you're doing the choreography. It's hard if you're connected. Squeeze those legs together for rowing three from the chest. Sit really tall, reach those arms forward to the high diagonal, lower the arms and lift. Open the arms wide to the side. And again, reach up. Ooh, big stretch. Get as tall as you can. So if your shoulders are coming up into your ears, you've lost an arm back connection. So you wanna reach your shoulders from your back into those handles and circle. Rowing four, flex the ankles from the hips. Head to the knees. Keep your hands along the mat all the way. Reach for your feet and lift up. So if your arms took off sooner, you had takeoff too soon, that means your upper neck and shoulders are doing the work. We want this reach to come from way down low, way down your shoulder blades to your back. Whew, all right. Crisscross, applesauce, shave and hug. So you have the hands into the handles. They go behind the head, index finger and thumb touch and then reach forward. So a lot of people like to say push the knees down. I say push the feet down. And the reason is I still want your inner thighs to work here. I don't want them to overstretch. So we're just reaching up from our back. It's not a tricep press. And then on this last one, you lift up, switch the cross to the legs, and you go into the hug. And then make sure that that pinky side of the hand is still into the handle. If you're using loops, your hand should look perpendicular to the floor. Two more. 
So next we're gonna do the big swan. There is a swan prep here. It looks a little bit like grasshopper. If you know it, do it. If you don't, get on the floor and do a mat swan if the big swan is not ready for your practice yet, okay? So you'll want two heavy springs on whether you're doing a swan prep or the big swan. You will want your long box. If your reformer did not come with a long box, let me know what you have in the comments below. I'll do a live and tell you which one to get. So you wanna have that long box on, two heavy springs on. You may want a sticky pad depending on the material of your pants or your box. Feet go on the frame or on the foot bar. And then a lot of people put the box crease in their hip crease. Put it around like the top of your thigh. I promise it's gonna feel better. Bend those knees, round over your box. Arms start by the ears connected to the back. Then I stand in my feet, I reach my tailbone between my knees, and I lift my chest. Big back bend here. Very important, lower down halfway. Stretch out, then this back bend is little. It's just the upper back, it's not huge. And then bend in. A lot of people make the mistake of making it too big, bending the knees and going to the lower back. Big back bend. Lower, straighten out, then lift the upper back, feel the shoulders on your back, bend your knees, pull yourself back over the box. Last one. <sighs> lift and lengthen, reach and lift up. Woo. And OPC, sometimes we do the swan prep together, sometimes we do the big swan. We always give options. Hands on the box, sit back onto your feet or step off to the side, drop down to one spring for your pull straps. We always give options for exercises you can't do yet because it's brave and courageous to do the ones you're ready for instead of the ones you're not. So pull straps. You're on one heavy spring or one medium spring. You walk your hands up your straps. Get your shoulders at the edge of the box. I know it feels more fun to go forward, but I promise you, try it out here. Walk on the wild side. Spend your inner thighs up. Reach your tailbone down. And then pull the arms straight back. Then the heart goes forward. So if you lifted the chest first, I know it's tempting, but chest is last. Arms are first, then the upper back. So see how the swan just prepared us for that pull straps? Last pull strap on this one. And then you'll slide your hands down to the end of the strap. Open your arms like a T, palms facing down. Pull the arms up and back. And again, chest is the last to come up. After this, we have backstroke. All right, so you take the handles in one hand, you step off to the side. You add a second spring, all right? Then you come with one handle on each hand behind your back and you sit at the edge of your box. You lie down, double check you're not too far back. Make fists like your shave over your forehead, heels together, toes apart. Everything reaches up, open, we circle it around, hold and then you bend it in. And again, up, open, circle around, hold, and bend. One more time in this direction, unless this is hard for you. If it's easier, or possible rather, you're gonna reverse, reach everything out to that hundreds position. Then open up, you've close the spring. And again, reach, open up, lift your chest high to close the spring. One more time. Okay, here's the scary part for some. Handles on one hand, we tease her up, you lean your chest back, so don't pull on those handles. Take a spring off, and then you lie back down for teaser. So there are options to do your teaser where you roll up with starting with your knees into your chest. I'm gonna teach you this full version though today. So heels together, fingertips press down to the floor, and you come up. You lower and lift the arms three times. If that's enough for you, you'll stick with that the next two reps, okay? If you want more, here we go, we roll down, we reach into this back bend, and then we pull ourselves up, again, hands to the floor, pinkies up, and draw circles. How big can your circles get without you lowering your chest? Three in each direction. And then we're gonna roll it down, stretch out without resting, come back up, hold it, reach those arms as high as you can, and then circle the legs up, open, out together. Three times each direction. And then you roll it down, all right. Step off, let's do breaststroke. So breaststroke is not, this is one of those ones that's probably not in most people's practice yet. So you can go back to your swan, 
or your pull straps, or you can do this one with, we with weights, okay? So, or just the motion, right, not the straps. So you'll have your thumbs hooked into the handles. Make sure both straps are in front of you. Take them onto the front of the box, and then you lie on your stomach with your knees at the edge of the box, okay? Now, arms reach back. I'm only on that one spring from that teaser, right? I'm gonna do three hamstring curls here. And then I'm gonna reach my arms forward like a superhero. I lift my arms up, they're connected to my back, that's why my chest lifts. Circle around and again, kick three times. So three hamstring curls, and then reach. And then lengthen. Don't worry if your chest lifts or not, because if your arms are connected to your back, I don't want your back lifting because of your lower back. You want the arms connected to the back to pull you into that long extension. Now we reverse. So three kicks, arms wide, reach forward, superhero status, and come down. We do one more in that reverse, which yes, is the harder one. And then we do a combo. So we kick three times, we reach forward, you open up, and then you reverse it, and you come all the way in. Hands on the corners of the box, open the legs up, scoot forward as you sit up. The scoot forward part is important, you don't wanna fall off that box. So we're gonna do horseback, then I'll teach you hamstring curls. You could also go into hamstring curls, then horseback, okay? So it's kind of, up to you. Typically, if you're doing breaststroke, you would eliminate the hamstring curls because we just did it, but I want to show you the order. So here we go. Hands in your pockets. It's parallel legs. Start with flex feet. Then point the feet around the back. Maybe the hips lift. You circle three times in one direction. Flex the feet and rest. It's okay if the hips don't lift up, okay? It's more important that the legs stay high and parallel. And again, reach. We do three sets of three, or you could do like one set of five. Especially when we're doing this full order, we should have just done one set of five. <laughs> but here we go. And again, reach. And yes, this workout is pretty zesty. Here's the deal. If you're a beginner intermediate, you would not be moving this fast. But if you're doing advanced, super advanced stuff, you are moving this fast because you need it to move fast so you have time to do everything. So we're gonna add a second spring. I'm gonna show you to do those hamstring curls. You take a seat here, you cross the straps, and then you put your short loops on, okay? Then we put the straps on our feet, not at the ankles, but just over the foot, and I'm going to slide my hips towards the left because I'm gonna to turn to the right. And as I turn to the right, I point my feet and I bend my knees. All right, and then we slide forward. Okay, ideally knees off the other box. Two springs is a bit difficult for me, so I'm gonna go down to one. You'll have the heels together, toes pointed and apart, and knees slightly apart, and you do five. You want the tailbone reaching long, knees slightly elevated, and chest is flat. We're not in extension. After three to five of these, you bring the knees and feet together parallel, and you do three to five more. And if you had asymmetries, this is where you do a single leg. Woo! Shake those off, step off. So I will call out where there are single leg options for things. We will do single leg elephant today, but like we're not gonna do the single leg long stretch, down stretch, up stretch. I'll just call those out, just so that you have that information for your own knowledge, right? So headrest is gonna go up, sticky pad's gonna go on. Two springs, so again, a heavy medium or two heavies, or two mediums of the lightest, I would go. All right, place your hands on the bar with the straightest wrists. Step up into a plank. A lot of people make the mistake of coming down to the knees. Step up into the plank, and then three of these. Could you do more? Sure, especially if you're on the newer side and not doing a full advanced order. All right, then we come down onto the knees. You wanna tuck those toes, you stretch the bottoms of the feet, lift the heart through the arms, push the heels back, lift the chest. We'll do three of these. Hip points are lifting up. Again, you could do a single leg version here. Then lift your ribs for up stretch. We will do the up stretch and the combo. So 
lifting the ribs, half the body weights in the arms, push the legs back, bring that whole shape home, lift the ribs, reach the tail down. A lot of times people like to lift the booty first. Lift the ribs, one more like this. Lift the ribs, then we reach out, we pull the chest through the arms for the combo, push back in that extension, and then lift the ribs again. So it's a up stretch to a down stretch with the knees up, then you push that back, and then you lift up. So you gotta use your legs, loves. One spring does not make this easier. One spring makes it pretty hard. And if you're using, if you let go of your legs, you'll go into your lower back. So lift those ribs for elephant, dig those heels down, and push the legs back. So check out if you're in a down dog position, you wanna feel like you're in that back stroke where your arms and legs reach up to the sky. Let the head hang. And then this is where we will do a single leg version because it's really a great teaching tool to get you ready for single leg tendon stretch, single leg down stretch, etc. So you have one leg behind you, it does not have to be high, it is parallel and is reaching up. Only as high as it doesn't take you out of your round shape, right? Then we have our long back stretch. So hands on the foot bar, straightest wrist you can give me, dig those heels down, get them into the shoulder rest. Bend those elbows, reach with the legs, lift the hips. And again, bend the elbows, reach with the legs. So it's not an arm exercise. I know it's called long back stretch <laughs> and it makes you think about the arms, but it's about the spine lifting, reaching, and standing in those legs. We do three in each direction. You could do the single leg version here. I'm not doing that to you because we've got too much to get to. We take this pad, we slide it down. We go back to what we did for our same footwork springs. This is stomach massage. So I did four, so I have to do four. If you did three, you'll do three. You sit close to the edge, obviously based on where you have space to sit up and have a long round shape. Then you put the balls of the feet on the foot bar. You'll press out, lower lift the heels and come in. So again, the heels only go as low as they stay together. Good job. See, you're picking up. We're just gonna do five of these today. Three to five is enough when you're doing a more advanced workout. If you're newer, you could do five to eight. Then we're gonna come in, take a spring off. You try to keep your legs up when you do that. Take your hands back without locking your elbows, lift up your armpits and reach. If you're losing your pants here, you have to lift your upper butt more. So it's not about shoving your ribs forward, but we don't wanna let the butt get underneath us. After five of these, come in, reach through, take another spring off. Arms reach forward, just three of these. And then we'll go into the twist. So you open up, try not to lean back, hips are right underneath those shoulders. So the shoulders tend to lean back as we twist, but the twist comes from the waist, not our arms, loves, not our neck. After three in each direction of these, we'll go into our tendon stretch. Now, if elephant is a challenge, and upstretch is a challenge for you, I would rather you practice that than tendon stretch can be a little scary, okay? So now we take this pad and we turn it. We take our hands like we did for long back stretch, but our heels come off. Sometimes I see too much of the foot off. So just the heels off, let the head hang, 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 hang. And then reaching the heels through, lift the ribs and then close the spring. It's not a huge movement as you can see. A lot of people make it too big like you're gonna touch the wheels out there. Nope, just this small hard exercise here. Now, we can go into the single leg. I will show you that. You go to, you take one hand in, one leg out. We'll do two with the leg to the side and then two with the leg to the back. Hello, single leg elephant. We bring that leg around. I like to do one or two in the center just to keep the rhythm and then we hop the leg out and we do two and two. And yes, for those of you who like to nerd out, there's a whole other thing you can do with the legs there. I think that's enough for all of us today. Foot bar goes down, head rest goes down, short box. So you grab your short box, it comes here. I like to use a sticky pad there. And then I also like to have a pole. If you don't have a pole, you'll hook your thumbs. Then you grab your straps. If you've got two on your reformer, it means they want you to use both. So it's a nice little extra safety strap. You place the strap around where your feet meet your ankle and you push out, not from the knees, but the thighs. 
wrap your arms around your waist, make the longest round shape, and then you round back and you round up. Now, if you can go into extension, you do, but not if you're gonna hang off of your legs. You round back and you round up. We're just gonna do three. And then you grab the bar. You wanna see your arms in your peripheral vision. So sometimes they get too far behind us. So in your peripheral vision, push those legs apart. Look at the tip of your nose, flat back, lean back and up and again. And don't worry about how low you go, go worry about how long you get working those legs away. Oh, whew. it feels like a leg exercise most of the time. One side to side each way and then twist your body, then reach and come up. Some people reach, then twist. Twist, and it's a tall spine. So we're not rounding, we twist, reach, and we lift, twist, reach, and then if that goes well, we go around the world. So we twist, we reach, we open up, we go to the other side and unwind to the center. Twist, open up, reach the opposite rib cage around and up, whoo. Set that down, grab a leg for tree. Hold it and straighten and bend. Then you walk up to the ankle and you flex and point, pull your head towards your knee, we'll pull your shoulders out of your ears. You rock back, I'm reaching through this leg, walk down and if you extend, you extend. The head is the last thing to go back, it's the first thing to come up the extension needs to go through that upper back. And if you're like, Leslie, I'll never be able to do this. Well, on this third one, here we go. We're gonna come all the way down. If you can, your hands come to the floor. You push into a bridge, like a high wheel, and you do three circles in each direction. If you think you'll never be able to do it, well, first of all, you will, won't be able to do it. But the other thing is, is we have to remember the reformer is just one piece of equipment that we use. And then roll it up. Too often, I only see people do the reformer. If that's you, hello. <laughs> that's why at OPC, there's always a mat membership with each other membership. Why? You've got to get off of your equipment and test your body. Let's do the other side. But also, he created like spine correctors and ladder barrels and Cadillacs and towers and window chairs and tigers and lions. Oh my. <laughs> Flex and point the ankle, head to the knee. And that's because. All of us have different strengths, so some exercises will come more naturally. Walk on up with three of these. And some exercises are always gonna be a challenge, and so we need apparatus that can support us in learning and understanding where to move from. And so you don't just somehow become someone who can do this wheel. You train your body for it, three circles. Just like an athlete trains for their sport reverse the circles, and they don't just practice the same thing over and over again, expecting it to work. They do complementary counter exercises to teach them what they need. Now, side sit-ups, I will be honest, um, this exercise is something that some classical programs put in, some don't, because it sort of gets absorbed into like the twist and reach. Um, and if you are looking at my cards, there's also a twist on hip that you could do if you're doing the more advanced twist and reach. But I do wanna show it to you. So we'll put the foot in the strap, heel up, knee comes here, and then hands behind your head, and we go down and up five times. And you can only come up as high as your heel stays up. And then we switch sides. So here we go. Not toes up, it's heel up. I promise you it makes a difference. Uh, I do happen to love the side sit up. So even though it kind of gets absorbed in other exercises, I do love to add it in myself. All right, so go ahead and get rid of the box and your bar and your pad and let's go to our short spine. Now, if you're not doing overhead exercises, rolling like a ball is a great exercise on the mat. That would be a good replacement. Here's what's super cool about us doing our hamstring curls after our horseback. Our straps are already set up. Isn't that brilliant? I love an order. I love an order because I love a transition. So we're gonna do three short spines and three high frogs. All right, so here we go. Your headrest should be down already. 
You should already have those two springs we need. Take the straps, lift the feet into them, and then bring your arms down by your side. Push the legs out, lift the hips up first. As long as your back is bending and the, the carriage is moving, you can keep going. If your back stops or the carriage stops, you stop and bend your knees. You should be moving with the springs. On this next one, we're gonna go all the way up, stay up, bend the legs, reach into the straps three times. So you're never relaxing in any exercise because you have to be ready to re-engage the springs. Finish your short spine and roll down. Take those off, drop them off into the well. We have the headstands. So if you have anything going on with your neck, or if you've not done overhead stuff or ever done a headstand on a non-moving piece of equipment, please just watch. You can also do double straight leg stretch on your mat and some shoulder bridge on your mat. It's gonna prepare you for this. We want the headrest up. I want a sticky pad on, and then it's one to two uh, springs. I'm going to do it with um, one spring just so that I can talk and do it. Um, it doesn't make it easier. I'm gonna actually promise you it's gonna feel more unstable, but I won't die. <laughs> so um, I'm also not gonna do the head stand fully today, but I'll talk you how that goes. So you have two springs on, um, maybe one heavy, okay? And then your foot bar is up. Then you take your hands and they go on the shoulder rest. Then between the crown of your head and the hairline is where you place your head and then you place your feet and you come up into your, dub, your double straight leg stretch. So your ribs are lifting. Then my legs push the carriage away and then my ribs lift up. The weight on your arms should be minimal because someday we'll put our hands behind our head or behind our back. After three to five of these, if you were amazing and on two springs, both legs would just lift up into a headstand or you can actually just practice by taking one leg up, bring it down, other leg up, Bring it down now, this is very important. Step to the floor, okay? And then um, two springs for the other headstand. So this one, now we go between the top of the head and the back of the head. So I like to get my bun out of the way. And you'll take your balls of your feet on the foot bar, heels together, toes apart. And then we take our hands to the shoulder rest. We have to lift up like we're gonna do a high bridge and come onto the head, again, between the crown and the back. And then you push with the legs, you lower lift those heels, and you lift. So my neck is nice and long. I don't feel like it's doing this. It's not moving around. It's following my thoracic spine, and my legs in center are holding me up. After three to five of these, we lift up, and we come down. Get rid of your sticky pad. You can leave your bar up or down for your semicircle, and you're just gonna walk yourself out and place the feet the same way they were for the headstand, heels together, toes apart, heels are up, and then you lift your hips, but you roll your heart down, your ribs down, your waist down, you drag it out, and then you roll your hips up and you come in. If the spine is moving, the rule is the carriage is not moving. If the carriage is moving, the spine is not moving. <laughs> like you're not getting higher or lower. After two in each direction, we will come in. So you could do two to three in each direction. And with the heels up, you reach around, grab your ankles, big stretch, and then sticky body slides back on and we come off. All right. So take your foot bar down and your headrest can stay down. You're on two springs, so you're good to go. Grab those handles for chest expansion. Harder is to hook your feet off of the edge. Easier is to have your knees up against the shoulder rest. Straight wrist, straight elbows. Pull the arms back. Look both ways. And then bring the arms forward. And again, pull the arms back. Look, look, and then reach the arms forward. Last one. Oof. Double check that your hips sit over your knees. Sometimes they like to drift back. Then we sit back without pulling on the straps and we go to three heavy springs. So we were on two, now we go to three. We'll do two thigh stretch first. So knees are hugging towards each other, arms are reaching forward and up, and you lean back 
and you lift those arms up. Double check is not coming from your biceps and your elbows though. Should feel like it's coming from your upper back. Okay, now we do a back bend. So you lean back and you back bend the upper back. If your lower back shoved forward, we're not really doing the right thing. So you wanna feel strong. Your hips stay where they are, the low back stays where it is, and the upper back back bends. Now, if that's going well and you have a good back bend strategy, then there's another back bend that we can do. However, this one you may want to spotter. So you put the foot bar back up, we go to two springs, knees are into the shoulder rest. You have to combine the thigh stretch and the back bend simultaneously. Arms come up and we thigh stretch, back bend, grab the foot bar, three shapes, hold it out there on the third one, move the legs three times. Dismount with both hands simultaneously, do a little stretch here, counter stretch, and then come up. So this is where Swakati would go if you were doing it. Foot bar would go down, you'd be on one spring. This is actually not in my practice on the reformer. So I have a full tutorial, you can do it there. Um, also, if you have heavy springs like me and are a woman, it just is tricky. There's a nice version of it on the armchair. So that would go here. Now we'll do the kneeling arm circles. Um, if you have lighter springs, it is easier to add in. Um, however, um, again, I do like the armchair version because the spring just really attaches to your shoulders. You get too light and it's not really doing anything, right? So we're going on one spring and we are going to come kneeling, um, stand on your knees, pinky sides of the hands into the handles, and then we do three circles in each direction. You want to keep the hands in front of the thighs. If you want to do shave and hug here, you could. Um, there's a lot of opportunities, like even in teaser, to like, add a twist or add shave there. Um, so there's different places you could add it. That would be fun if you were to remove it from the beginning, right? So we're going to drop these off. Edit that, Jay. Okay, so now we have another back bend we can do. So you'd want to have two springs on and you need your straps and a sticky pad. Now, to be honest, in my own personal practice, I would not do all of these advanced things. Hence, I skipped the swakati. Since I did the back bend with the foot bar up, I might not do this one if I was going to do high bridge, which I am going to insert into this workout for you today. But for just your reference, this for your encyclopedia, I'm going to do this one. So foot bar is down, two springs are on, arches of your feet are on the edge of the carriage. So obviously, you have to have some flexibility there. And then we want to make sure our hands where we can grab them. You're going to lift up and come back onto that spot for the headstand. And then you're going to reach up, grab your straps, and you do a chest expansion here. So it's that same thigh stretch we did. It's that headstand. And you just pull the arms as much as you can from your back. After three to five of those, you hook them up. You lift up. You roll down. And we get to do our snake. You can see how like there's different reasons to do different ones, right? Depending on where you are in your level of flexibility. So for snake, you can do foot bar up or down. I like to do mine down at this moment. And we have one foot on the foot bar, one spring on, hands in line with each other on the carriage, head hangs down, and you lift. If your upstretch combo isn't awesome, go do that. You push with the legs, pull the heart through, head in and lift it up. Again, it's a leg exercise, loves, it's not the arms. After two to three snakes, you push halfway out and you do a twist. <clears throat> now, is there a single arm? Yes, there is. <laughs> Insert that here if it's in your practice. See how you can omit what's not right for you. I am doing that with you because it's more important that I do what's in my practice than what's not. Go ahead and let the head hang. Lift the ribs and then push out. Perfectionists don't get further, right? Listen to the body, work with it, and be curious. Push halfway out and twist. And then close the string, come all the way in. Because that is what's going to make you stronger 
have a longer practice and do life better. So now we wanna add a second spring. I'm actually going to add a third. And here's why. The next part, the next several exercises, we don't even have to touch the springs. And I'm just gonna ready myself for when we need the springs to change. So I have three heavy springs on for my long spine massage. That can be done on two springs, right? But before we do that, we have corkscrew, tick-tock, control balance off. However, a nice thing we can do is set ourselves up for those. So we can put our headrest down and we can put our straps, our long straps on so that we're just ready to go. It's a great place to do this. And so you wanna have your long loops on. And then we put the other one on. All right, now that we have these set up, we lie down for our corkscrew and our TikTok. So it's really cool on OPCs, people can actually be curious and send in videos of themselves doing an exercise and we can actually give them feedback. So if you're struggling with that stuff, join us so we can help you because then you can actually get some homework. So we're gonna put the heart down. You may or may not lift the hips up, right? That's gonna depend on your practice. I'm gonna lift my hips up in the center. I'm gonna come part way down, circle the legs around and lift come part way down, sweep the legs around. We do two to three sets of these. So you're constantly changing direction. Your elbows are nice and wide. Your heart is on the mat. Then tick tock. You look to the right, your legs go to the left. A lot of people wonder why this comes second. <laughs> it doesn't mean you learn it second. You probably learn tick tock first. But after you've done that corkscrew, maybe you can go further. Maybe you can get more out of this tick tock, right? They're different exercises, they're not the same. One's not a prep. So one can teach, but it doesn't mean it's a prep. So now we slide out and we take our forearms over our head. And then, so we have room, right? Make sure your foot bar is down and I have room between my shoulder rests and my head. Then I grab the sides for control balance off and you can just do the prep. You take your left hand to the top of the shoulder rest and your left leg goes up and your right leg taps the frame and we pick it up and we switch the hands, switch the legs. So you just do this or <sighs> you come off and you reach. It's just a somersault. A lot of people make a big deal of it. And then we come back on, it's physics. You're doing a somersault and I'm lifting this leg up, 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 tuck the head in and I land and we do a prep. So we go left down, then right down, then we go left down. You want that leg to slide along the frame. And then somersault on. We are not aiming our heads for between the shoulder rests in between. You're really just trying to land on your shoulders, not your head, okay? So now we come off and this is where you would insert the second long box. Now here's the deal. The second long box is only added in if you're not going to do other things. Like if all we're gonna do is the reformer today, then we would add this in. But truthfully, you'd like grasshopper on the ladder barrel or you might like rocking and swan on the spine corrector more, right? So we come here, we set up for our grasshopper. Shoulders over the wrist, so this looks a lot like a swan prep, but we're gonna add the grasshopper in. So you bend your elbows, lift the legs, kick your heels to your seat, lift the legs up, beat, 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 beat. So I'm trying to get my legs on the ceiling. That time didn't go so well, so let's go again. We pull, we bend, we lift, there we go. <sighs> One more. <sighs> it's not an arm exercise. My arms are there to support the extension, okay? All right, then we slide back till our center is on the box and we bend our knees, reach back, grab our ankles, pull the heels towards your seat, lift the feet, come into a back bend come back down and again you pull the heels to the seat lift and come back down last time pull the heels to the seat lift and then you lift the thighs to rock you a few times then strong and controlled let go reach everything forward and swim 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 and rest step off to the side take the box away why would we do that why would we take the box away and bring it back up three times because then we can see if we are getting more connected about carrying our box around. Now, we have long spine massage, frogs, and circles. So 
we're already set up for it. How nice is that? So headrest should be down. Again, I'm working off three springs because I need three heavy springs for my practice, but two might just be right for you. You take your long straps, you put them on your feet, and you have your arms down. You wanna look at the ceiling the whole time, frog the legs out, squeeze the legs together, lift up. It's a lot like short spine, but with longer straps. Open the legs and reach. If you go too wide, it's not gonna feel awesome. So you go about as wide as your reformer, and yes, <laughs> that was a slight grunt as I'm teaching you, because this is hard, and I'm trying to get my hips up, and the goal is that my feet and my hips line at the same time. I'm obviously struggling with that. Open the legs up to reverse. We go up, we squeeze together, and we reach out, and this reverse is sometimes easier for me to practice, getting those hips and feet to be together more. Yeah, there we go. So I'm still working on getting higher, but higher and I are not there yet. <laughs> and then lift your headrest up for some frogs. Do you see how I said yet? So, so important. We like to talk about this at online players classes a lot. We want you to say yet and circle. We want, it's okay to be in process and in progress. I am not here to be perfect for you because I'm not perfect. Reverse these circles, so five in each direction. It, every day my body is different. Yesterday that went much better. Now, I also didn't do a full every single reformer exercise ever yesterday. So there's a difference between the days and our bodies. We take these off. All right, now we have the hybrid. I have Brad here. He's gonna help me get into this. Maybe uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't mind showing you if it doesn't happen because it's part of the process. So you wanna be on two springs. You want your foot bar up. You would have been practicing high bridge over on your spine corrector if this is gonna be in your practice. So you lie on your back. So you're gonna place your feet on the foot bar. Your hands go on your shoulder rest. You're gonna press down, lift your chest up and then you're gonna push up into a wheel, yep. And then you can reach the carriage away and close it a little bit and reach it away and close a little bit. I'm just holding it because that's where my practice is. If you wanted to lift a leg up, you could lift a leg up and then you're gonna come. Woo! Oh, I touched the ceiling, guys. Woo! And then you come down. <sighs> Thank you. All right. Always have a spotter if you're not sure. That was fun. Okay, now, if we're gonna continue with this amazing order, my spotter is free to go. We're gonna go into our mermaid. So, one to two springs on here. And um, you wanna try to get the bottom leg up against the shoulder rest. A lot of people like to bring it out. Obviously for knee and hip issues, I can understand why, but you want this bottom knee pushing out because it's a leg exercise movement, not an arm, right? And so the arm goes up, I'm gonna push with my leg and I'm gonna pull myself up. So not pushing with my arm, push with the leg, pull the self up, push with the leg and pull yourself up. Then you take your hand here and you come up. If you wanted to do the counter stretch between each rep, I'll show that on the other side, you could, okay? So it just kind of depends on your goal for the mermaid. I don't love the mermaid on the reformer myself. I usually do it on the one to chair, but, or on the Cadillac. So we'd come up, we'd grab, see how that's like that side sit up, and then we come up, push with the leg, and in, and up. And three of these, and then you have options. You could do a star here, or you could go into the knee stretches. I'm gonna do the star later. So here we go, two springs on. We're just gonna do five round, five flat, five knees off, because we've been doing the whole order. But if you're newer and you've been skipping, you'll do more. So you round your back, you push with the backside of your legs, you keep lifting your ribs up, and you close the spring on each rep. And then your arch is in the upper back, of course. After five of these, we round the back and you push the legs back while lifting the ribs. Knees stay low, carriage closes. And then you stem in, put your footwork springs back on. We are on the home stretch, loves pelvic lift and running. So running comes first, lie onto your back, headrest is up, parallel feet, press out one heel under, one heel up. Just like our tennis starts at the beginning, we're not hanging off our Achilles. And you just get to check in. 
how do you feel? It's been like an hour since we laid down with our feet on our footbar. How's it feel? It feels good, huh? Come all the way in, arches wide, lift the hips. Just a little lift to the hips, it's not a huge bridge. It's just a little one, pushing with the back of our legs. You can see how if you're new, pelvic lift is eventually gonna get you into a lot of other exercises, right? Come all the way down, okay. So, here we go. Now we're at the finales. You could do all of them, you could do some of them. So the control push-ups, I take my springs off, I gear out because on my reformer can gear out and I'm also five, nine and a half. I put my stopper in. If your foot reformer does not gear out, use a lighter spring. If you are shorter, you don't need to. Uh, one to two springs on this exercise and then you place your hands here. So this is a very similar to the long stretch except for the arms move instead of the legs. Um, on long stretch you push with the legs, on this one you push with the arms. So the arms are at the very back of the shoulder rest, head comes down, lift your ribs, find a pike, and then a plank. And you can just push with the arms a few times or you push the arms out as you lift a leg. Not the hip, just the leg. So you see how you're doing your swimming here? with those legs and then you hold and maybe you do three push-ups. Head in, ribs up, step to the floor. Again, one or two springs. Ideally we're at two springs. Hands come to the front of the shoulder rest. I see a lot of people with their hands back here, but you want them on the front. And then you go onto the feet and you can just push the arms like a reverse chest expansion or you kick a leg forward. Notice I didn't say up. It's not about the leg touching the sky, it's about it reaching. You could even do circles here. You just circle the leg in each direction and then dips. And then after these, we step to the floor. So we don't lower ourselves down and come out of that connection. You wanna keep all of it. You can either stay geared out or four star, you can gear in. Now, star's one of those exercises that I struggle with. It's a little scary for me. I know, after all those other things, this is the one that scares me, but it's true. So you can also do star on the floor, side plank, right? Hand comes to the center, foot comes on, and then we wanna lift this hip up to hold us up. We're in a plank, it's like that long stretch. Then you can just push out and in. So arm and leg go up and down. And maybe if that's going well, the arm and leg go forward, and then the arm goes forward, the leg goes back. And again, pushing with that bottom leg, not the arm, arm and leg forward and then arm forward, leg back, and then we circle everything around, look back where our foot's gonna land, and stretch. Woo! <sighs> Feels like we're bowing, like it's the end. It's not the end, but I promise you the full order. So here we go. And we side plank, and then again, the leg pushes, and the leg pushes, and, and we go arm and leg forward with the leg pushing, arm forward, leg back, arm and leg forward, arm forward, leg back, woo! And then we circle and we reach, and I'm adding that to my list of exercises to do homework for. And that's what's so fun about doing the reformer, to observe what your body needs. We don't have to be perfect, we just be an observation. So, now, one spring on, foot bar down, we go into our splits finale. So you step on and you wanna place your foot on the frame and then you heel toe out as far as you can. Someday the shoulder rest, but you wanna have weight in both legs, arms out, and you go out and in. I see a lot of people put their foot at the front edge. It's a different exercise. Joe supplies was all the way out here. And then we can add on, we can stay out. We can lean forward, round, lift up, Open the arms, close the spring, keep the spring closed, lean out, round, lift up, and then heel toe in, okay? Now on the other side, you could repeat that or you could do the saw. So, put the foot out there, heel toe, heel toe, and parallel feet, both legs are working. Stay out on the third one. My left hip remains up as I use my left foot from, my left hand from my left foot. I come up, my right hip stays up as I reach my right hand for my left foot. I close the spring, keep the spring closed, and my hips remain square. It wants to tip, but I gotta pull it up, 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 up. Uh, whew. Heel, toe, in. <sighs> All right, we're almost there. Front splits. 
Don't we all want a quad stretch? Yes, we do. So feet in and then place one foot up for your thigh stretch and you push your back leg back. So when you repeat an order, what is so cool is you can get closer and closer and deeper to it. You don't have to do all this. At OPC, we do a 30 minute version and a 50 minute version. We don't do most of it, right? Then you come up into a lunge, turn that heel down, you push with the back leg. Just three of these. And then you lift up, why? Because it's not about trying to do this perfect order perfectly every time. It's about exploring what each exercise means. Reach up, round forward. So we use each exercise to teach another exercise. Why? Because I want you to teach yourself. Other leg, push back with that back leg, lift your heart up. So it's not this front leg. I know your front leg can do it, babe. Or you step back leg back, turn that heel down. And now again, the back leg, this is all fast. It's what I call your thigh that meets your booty. That's what's pushing this out. Hips are square. Then we stand on both legs, we lift up, and the back leg pushes out. My hamstring and glute are still holding me up, but that back leg pushes out, we come all the way down, and we go into our Russian splits. And what's so cool is some of these exercises, you were just like, feel like a natural at. So what if I was able to help you see how that could help with ones you struggle with? Russian splits. So step onto the carriage, hands on the shoulder rest, let the head hang. Put your back foot on the foot bar first. Notice how mine is turned out, so the heel is on and the ball of the foot. And then the arch goes over, and we come into a lunge, and we reach the front leg forward and back while the back leg stands on the foot bar. Then we come up, and we reach. So back leg stays straight, front leg does the work from the back side of the leg. Reach your arms up, spine stretch forward, come in heel into the crease and then while we're doing this sort of splits thing you do want to keep the hips square so it's not about you unwinding your hips and showing me how flexible you are this is your single leg elephant this is your tendon stretch with the leg back this is your tree close the spring put the foot back other foot on and so when we can make those connections you can teach yourself more all right other leg arch over the crease three times and if you're like, I'm unsure if my foot placement is right. Well, if you're an OPC member, send me a video. You know where to do it. We come up after three of these. We reach forward and close the spring heel in to the crease. Lift the ribs. And if you're like, Leslie, I'm not a teacher, though. Well, OPC is for every person to be a client. Bring the feet down so the front foot comes back, then the back foot. Russian squats. Even teachers are clients when they're in OPC. Everyone is learning together. So we now need to take these straps off and we use our handles. There's a couple variations of the Russian squats. The ones that I teach are a little bit more like a rolling like a ball and it's a little safer for us all to do. So here we go. So this is my version that I like to teach. Your feet go to the back edge. You squat like you're unrolling like a ball. You grab up like on the spot you would do for chest expansion. If you pull on the straps when you think you're gonna fall, you will fall. So just bend your knees and come down, okay? Otherwise, you look straight ahead. And we push into our feet and we stand all the way up. And then we bend our knees and we come down. So there's a version where you hold the handles and you pull them up. That is easier to do on an 86 inch reformer. I'm a tall person, I hit the wheels before I can even get there. So that's why I do this version. <laughs> Come all the way down, hook those handles, pat yourself on the back. You kicked your own fast. Um, and if you just watched the whole time for educational purposes, I hope you wrote down the exercises you want to dive in deeper. Check out those on our playlist. Check them out in our Reformer flashcards. At onlinepliesclasses.com, every single week I drop a new Reformer class for them. It's 30 minutes, and every month we drop a 50-minute version. Each class has a theme. That theme goes with either the 30-minute mat class or the other 50-minute classes. And the goal is for you to see how this method actually intertwines and weaves itself together. It is designed to help you be in practice 
not in perfection. We also have an amazing community where you can ask questions, share aha moments, get feedback on the equipment that you have, the setup that you're using, the exercises that you're doing, if they're the right ones for you, what your homework should be, and we help hold you accountable, which is better than I can say for any other platform that's out there. You can have lots of access, but that accountability part is really hard, not at OPC, we help you do that. So please do me a favor, if you really liked this, if you like my style, go to onlinepliesclass.com slash YouTube, Give our trial a try and see if we are the right place for you. And again, questions, comments, you can put them below. But if you're an OPC member, put them in the group. I answer them daily. I love you all so much. Thank you for doing this with me. Have an amazing day.